PXN controllers have a name for being high quality but low cost for console gaming or PC gaming. But how does the PXN V10 wheel and combo compare as far as build quality and fit and finish as this PXN P50 which we reviewed recently which was amazing. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Yes, you heard right. We are venturing into the world of racing, steering wheels, sim setups, and that sort of thing. We've got a copy of Assetto Corsa downloading and installing right now on our gaming PC. We're gonna test this thing out in a future video, but first we need to find out what the heck is inside the box, what kind of build quality, is this controller combo and is it worth your money? A lot of those questions are gonna be answered in this video and in future videos. Let's dig in. So the first thing that you're gonna notice, this box is huge and it's heavy. It's actually, it, I don't know if you can see kind of there, it, it weighs a ton. There's a ton of weight to this. It showed up at the door in a box a little bit bigger than this and it said, caution, heavy. And uh, when we look ooh, onto the side here, it says that this supports PC, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox X, S, Series X, and S. I suspect it also will support PlayStation 5, but it doesn't specifically say. So, in a future video, we will test out the functionality on PlayStation 5 games, see if it works, but that's a future video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell, so when that video comes out, you can see that if you're curious about that. When we look at product features, some of the things that they talk about, support for, uh, we already talked about what it supports, is developed with technology of drive-free force feedback to bring a realistic driving experience, support to set the racing wheel function via the app developed by PXN. Oh yeah, shoot, I forgot. They got an app. So we reviewed the PXN controller. Where have I got it? I got it over here. So we reviewed this PXN P50 controller before and it has an amazing set of features that are unlocked through the PXN app. It was absolutely phenomenal. This racing wheel also supports that same app. So we will connect that up, I think in this video and we'll at least see what kind of features and functionality are available through that app. But before we get that far, we gotta at least see what's inside the box. So let's keep looking at the specs here. Six plus one shifter with downward pressure reverse gear. Three in one pedal with hull magnetic induction. Awesome. Rotation degree can be adjusted to 270 or 900 degree. 900 degree would give you more of a true car-like feel where you have to turn multiple times to turn hard one way or another. Detachable design of the steering wheel designed with dual paddles and ergonomically designed as racing wheel. There's a little bit of uh, Chinese English in kind of what they wrote there, but I'm pretty sure you get the you get the picture. So it's time now, I guess, to just start digging apart the box and talking about the components as we pull them out of the box. So we'll pop this top cap off here. So right off the bat, we've got the user manual. Might as well have a look and see what's inside that user manual. It's got a couple of cards. Thank you for buying PXN. It's got another card that's all written in English, or not English, written in Chinese. It won't help you a whole lot. And then it's got the user manual. I don't know, it looks like it's multi-language. You're then gonna be greeted with a whole bunch of clips, some tools, and some clamps. Now these clamps are kind of unique as far as how they clamp onto your desk. They probably won't even really clamp on this desk. They will. I have already seen a complaint about the clamp style on this. It doesn't actually get a lot of leverage to fully lock the wheel on, but we'll explore that as we are testing out the fit and finish of this. There's the other clamp there. And again, same kind of clamp. They are, they feel like plastic, but they're cold like they're metal. So I'm gonna say that they're coated metal or a high quality plastic. This part is definitely plastic. This part feels like plastic too. So I'm gonna say they're all plastic. The first thing out is the steering wheel.
Now the first thing you're gonna notice when you pull the steering wheel out is that it is a little bit smaller than your typical racing steering wheel. If you are brand new to kind of the racing wheel segment, you would think that this is normal. So you probably won't think anything of it. But those of you who have different branded steering wheels that you've used already, this one is on the smaller side. It features a nice kind of simulated leather wrapped design. On the back, it's got four paddles. The top two are clicky, as you can hear. They have a decent amount of throw to them. And one of the complaints that I've heard from other reviewers is that when they're holding the wheel and they pull the trigger with just one finger, that they squish their other fingers. Since they are metal, I would say you could probably bend this up a little bit if that was a real big concern for you, but there is a little bit of extra throw there, if you will, that is gonna hit you. The bottom ones, are not clicky, they're an analog style trigger. So you should, it feels like you should have some sort of, you know, typical on your PlayStation or your Xbox where these are, they're, they're an analog pull, so they're variable throw. So if you wanted to, I suppose you could set these up to be your gas pedal and your brake and still have them quite adjustable. On the face, you'll have your typical controller type layout with your X, your Y, your B and your A as well as uh, your arrow keys here. It does have a PXN home button in the middle and then a number of menu buttons. These are buttons that you would be used to having on a controller layout. It also has a L3 and an R3 button, which would simulate if you're pushing down on analog sticks on your controller. They're all mappable, so you can set them up to be whatever you want, but that's kind of what it is. The steering wheel itself is, is pretty light but it is sturdy, like it feels sturdy. Even this design here, this is all a piece of aluminum. So there's a good mix of aluminum and plastic that's kind of holding this all together. On the back, you can see that it does have the thread on design that will thread onto obviously the main controller driver, which we're gonna check out when we get to that part. But this was just the first thing that we pulled out of the box as we were unboxing it. Oh, next up. All right, the shifter. The shifter is a nice inclusion in this package. It has a just a thread on clamp that will clamp to pretty much whatever table it is that you wish. It is set up as a gated six speed, which means it's got these little gates in here. So you can go like that. You get your positive shifting so that it creates more of a unique experience. This thing is really rattly and kind of annoying actually. See if we can stop it from rattling around. It also has a low high button and a park button on here. As far as the fit and finish, this gated portion again feels like metal. The main body of this thing is plastic. The shifter knob is plastic. The shifter rod here is metal and it feels sturdy. It also has a push for reverse. According to the uh, chart here, it's supposed to have a push down and go over for reverse but that's also sixth gear. So we can try in the game how the reverse truly actually works because I don't see a spot for it to go to reverse, but it does push down. Okay, okay, I see. So if you look at it from the side here and I go into sixth, that's sixth gear. But if I go like this, push it down and go back and let go, it's actually in reverse now. So it's locked in reverse. So that's how reverse must work. The end here that's dingling around and making that noise. It's a twist on connector, which would connect into this and then that would connect into the steering wheel or the back of the steering wheel. It's an interesting design choice because it means that if this part of the cable breaks, it would be hard to replace. 
So this is something that's not gonna be super users, user serviceable. However, it's also not something you're gonna be messing with all the time. So I doubt you're gonna really be disconnecting it from this very often. You just have the cable connected up and then plug the cable back into the base. The one complaint that again, experienced owners or experienced users are going to notice is that the distance between shift points on here is really narrow and it will create situations where you could potentially like miss shift until you get used to it. For those new gamers who are just getting into it, this is all you would know and you wouldn't know anything's different, but going from this to a different brand, you would notice that this is, is much narrower and then on those new ones, you would miss shift then. So it depends what you're used to and you would be able to get used to this. I have heard complaints that this top shifter ball is a little bit loose. I'm not gonna complain about that because really something, I mean, this is so cheap that you're getting so many high-end features in such a cheap controller that something's got to give. So we haven't talked about the price yet, but we'll get there, okay, we'll get there. Next up is this guy. This feels like the whole base of the unit, and it is. This is where all the action happens. This is where your steering wheel is gonna obviously attach to this. There's a little threading part here to thread the wheel on. It's got some rubber pads on here so that you can set it on your table where it's supposed to go. And then these big heavy duty clamps would obviously go and clamp that on after, which we will explore in a future video. Looking around on the side, there's a couple Allen head screws here, which we did get tools for uh, in the bag. We already saw those. And what these will do, you can loosen these off and the whole wheel can tilt a little bit. So depending on how you're sitting and your orientation, you can fine tune how this wheel fits on your desk or in your rig. It is a nice addition to the functionality and features of this controller. Coming around to the back, you're gonna see all of the ports that your controller plugs into. So your foot pedals, which we haven't seen yet, your shifter, you're gonna, and then the power cord, and then ultimately your USB connection, which will go out to your computer or your game console. So there's not a lot to say about this, except that it's got a good amount of weight to it. It is pretty heavy feeling. This has a belt drive feedback system in it. So it does have a quiet feedback system. So a lot of the older, cheaper ones would have a gear feedback. So it makes a lot of noise. These ones will be whisper quiet. And we don't know how good the force feedback works because we haven't tried it yet, but I hear that it's pretty good. So we'll find that out in a different video. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be plugging this in and testing it. We're just talking about the build quality, fit and finish and all of that. That leads us to the final component here, which is the pedal assembly. And that is a lot bigger than I thought it would be, actually. So this is our pedal assembly. The base of this is plastic. The pedals are plastic. The front edge of the pedals though are aluminum. They're a machined aluminum. They are adjustable. As you can see, you can loosen these screws and shift them over, make it a little bit wider gap between them if you need to, bring the, the gap tighter. It's got, is that real aluminum? This is probably a real aluminum base here. The bottom side is where the anchor bolts are, which is kind of an old design. So if you've got a rig that you need to bolt this to, you'd have to tip the rig up and then bolt into these holes here. It does have rubber feet, so when it's down, it's not gonna slide around too much, but if you get really excited about your gameplay, you could potentially end up having it shift around if you didn't bolt it down. One thing that you guys probably noticed is there are different colored springs on each of these, and each one has a different spring rate. So if I push the gas pedal, it's got a certain spring rate. Push the brake pedal, it's a heavier spring rate. And then I push the clutch and it's lighter than the brake pedal, but heavier than the gas pedal. They're also adjustable. So if you want it to be a little bit tighter, you can just crank these all up. And then there's a little lock nut on there. 
and then that will add a little bit of tension to it. So some seasoned gamers I've seen have complained that these are a little bit on the loose side, but with me playing with it right now, I'd say that they feel about right. I will try it in a different video where we'll actually hook it up to my game there, which is just waiting for me to get this all hooked up and try it out. But overall build quality seems quite good. These are supposedly connected to Hall Effect sensors. So that means you're not gonna get any uh, misreadings or anything like that. They will be durable. They will last for a very, very long time. They shouldn't wear out. They shouldn't have like dead spots that form or anything like that. So pretty high quality from that perspective. Now, one thing I didn't do yet was connect this steering wheel to see how that feels. So I guess I gotta turn it around like this to do it. And that just goes in like that. Now it is a multi-turn thread lock type system, which is really weird, but that takes care of that. And now it should turn. This is the 900 degree setting. So you can see that's a lot, or I can go like this, flip it to the 270 and it should stop sooner right there. If I flip it to 900, I think maybe it doesn't actually physically stop it. It just stops, it adjusts the feedback rating. That's what it seems like. So overall, the build quality seems pretty good. Now you're wondering how the heck expensive is this? So I just checked on Amazon. It lists for about $280 on there. I will put a link in the description to the Amazon web store for PXN. And don't forget, we did already review this controller and I loved it. My kids actually loved it too. And now they're all begging for one of these controllers. Super, super inexpensive and very high quality. So it is no surprise that this controller setup for under $300 is such high quality like it feels it feels really good now your options are buy this brand new or go look at a logitech system that's used for about the same price you're not going to get all of these features from a different brand for the same price you're going to have to spend more so what you have to decide is is this enough for me is this kind of the quality that i'm looking at or do i want to jump to the more expensive higher brands right off the bat. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.